Hare Krishna, very dear devotees, welcome back once again to our ongoing series on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. But first, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pashtata Deshatarine All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So today we are continuing with our mini-series on the binding rope of spotless love, and this will be uh, part five. While preparing these lectures, which emphasize um, devotion to the Supreme Lord, I was wondering how I'll ever obtain <laughs> that devotion. <laughs> because we so often hear that pure devotion to Krishna is rarely obtained. My thoughts were confirmed when um, I read in Nectar Devotion, Chapter 1, the following, Prabhupada writes, quote, Krishna does not agree to award devotional service to merely anyone. Krishna can easily offer a person material happiness or even liberation, but he does not agree very easily to award a person engagement in his devotional service. The rarity of devotional service is also confirmed in the Tantra Shastra, where Lord Shiva says to his wife, My dear wife, if one is a very fine philosopher, analyzing the different processes of knowledge, he can achieve liberation from material entanglement. By performance of the ritualistic sacrifices recommended in the Vedas, one can be elevated to the platform of pious activities and thereby enjoy material comforts of life to the fullest extent. But all such endeavors can hardly offer anyone devotional service to the Lord, not even if one tries for it by such processes for many, many thousands of births. So <clears throat> I was kind of losing hope. <laughs> <clears throat> kind of losing hope that <laughs> on that page. But then, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada mercifully concludes, devotional service can in fact be attained only through the mercy of a pure devotee. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela 19.151, and Prabhupada's quoting here, it is said, by the mercy of the spiritual master who is a pure devotee and by the mercy of Krishna, one can achieve the platform of devotional service. There is no other way. So at that point, I, I breathed a sigh of relief <laughs> that by my spiritual master's mercy, if I conduct myself properly as his disciple, it will be possible to achieve that exalted stage. <clears throat> and I was even more relieved when later I came across the following quote in Padma Purana, as cited in uh, Bhakti Sandarva 237.13. <clears throat> This really touched my heart. <clears throat> devotion to my spiritual master is more important than devotion to Hari. For if I am devoted to my spiritual master, then Lord Hari will personally reveal himself to me. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so, we ended uh, part four of this series with Krishna uh, pulling the mortar to which he was tied to by Mother Yasoda through the uh, twin Arjun trees, which caused them to fall down, thus liberating uh, Nalukavera and Manigriva from that terrible curse of Narada Muni. Now with the, the loud sound of the trees falling, you remember Nanda Maharaj came running to the scene and he untied Krishna. So at this point, I'd just like to backtrack a, a little bit and discuss this uh, monumental uh, moment. You could say that Nalakuvera and Mani Griva were freed from the curse of Narada Muni. <clears throat> Was, you know, freedom from that curse and, you know, meaning being, living as trees for hundreds of thousands of years, is that the end of their story? They just got freed from the curse. Or did they gain something more? And the answer is that they gained more, much more. In fact, it's quite amazing. 
they achieved life's highest goal, as described by Sri Prabhupada in Krishna book. Sri Prabhupada is quoting Krishna <coughs> himself who's speaking. Therefore, Krishna begins, O Nalukavera and Mani Griva, your lives have now become successful because you have developed ecstatic love for me. You have developed ecstatic love for me. This is your last birth within the material existence. Now, personally, I found this very interesting that Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva achieved perfection. There's nothing higher than developing ecstatic love for Krishna, Amala Bhakti, pure devotion. There's nothing higher than that. It's very interesting. They achieved the highest perfection without having performed any significant devotional service. I was thinking, <clears throat> they didn't do any devotional service to achieve that uh, ecstatic state of love of God. They just <laughs> sat as trees for some millions of years. <clears throat> we know, we, Krishna makes it very clear in Bhagavad Gita that he can only be achieved by devotional service. He says, Bhakti mam abhijananti yavanyas chasmi tattvataha tatamam tattvato jantva vishite tat anantaram. Many devotees know that verse. One can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of me by such devotion, he can enter into the kingdom of God. So it's by, devo by devotional service, which awakens devotion, or love, which culminates in ecstatic symptoms of love for Krishna. So how did these two uh, wayward demigods achieve this highest goal of life and go back home, back to Godhead, without doing any s significant devotional service? The answer is found. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.10.26. And this is Krishna speaking. Krishna personally answers this question, how these two persons achieve the highest goal of life. Krishna says, in a past life, these two trees were the demigods, Nalukavera and Manigriva, who were cursed by Narada to become trees in Braj. Although normally I would, have, I would have nothing to do with such materialists, I must fulfill Narada's promise to deliver them. <laughs> Although normally I would have nothing to do with such materialists, I must fulfill Narada's promise to deliver them. So it's very clear. Although they had no qualifications and millions of disqualifications, Nalakavera and Manigriva attained perfection because Narada Muni desired it. Being compelled by Narada Muni's love for him, Krishna, you could say, was obliged <laughs> to liberate Nalukavera Mani Griva because his devotee desired it. You could say that Narada Muni took responsibility for the deliverance of Nalukavera and Mani Griva. And I was thinking that wasn't the only time that Narada took responsibility for a fallen soul's deliverance. <clears throat> Someone who wasn't qualified became delivered by the mercy of, of Narada Muni. <clears throat> That we find in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya uh, 24, 255, where we hear Narada Muni say to Magrari the hunter, Yadi dara amara vachana, tabe se kariti pari tomara mochana. He says to the hunter, if you uh, listen to my instructions, I shall find the way you can be liberated. If you listen to my instructions, I shall find the way you can be liberated. In the purport, Sridhar Prabhupada refers to a song by Srila Narottam Das Thakur, wherein Narottam Das Thakur mentions devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Prabhupada writes, this is his purport, he quotes a verse from Narottam first, Gorangera Bhakta Ghane Jane Jane Shakti Dhare. Prabhupada writes, the meaning of this song is that the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are very powerful and each and every one of them can deliver the whole world. A pure devotee of Krishna can make the same demands that Narada Muni is making. He says, if you follow my instructions, 
I shall take responsibility for your liberation. Hare <laughs> Krishna. <clears throat> so we too can take solace that despite a lack of qualifications on our part, if we follow Sridhar Prabhupada's instructions and serve him to the best of our ability, we, just like Naluka Vera and Mani Griva, can attain the highest stage of perfection. I know that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he also touched on this point. I was reading in The Harmonist um, some weeks ago. <clears throat> at an initiation ceremony in 1932, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said in the initiation lecture, I see no reason why all my disciples cannot go back to Godhead in one lifetime. Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> repeatedly reassured us that by chanting 16 rounds and following the regulative principles, Krishna would accept us and take us home. That is very clear in Srila Prabhupada's famous letter to Gyanasham Das, who later became uh, His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, on February 16th, 1973. This letter is very dear to my heart. Prabhupada wrote, Now you must agree to very rigidly follow the rules and regulations chanting 16 rounds of beads daily, rising early and attending Mangalarti, observing the four principles, attending classes, eating only Bhagavad Prasadam, as well as working under the instruction of my representatives, such as your GBC representative and temple president. If you follow this procedure, very strictly Prabhupada writes, then your life will be glorious and you will go back home, back to Godhead. This I can guarantee. That's the line, right? <laughs> then your life will be glorious, and you will go back home, back to Godhead. This I can guarantee. Prabhupada's making a guarantee here. I was reading an article uh, by my godbrother, um, His Holiness Srivaram Swami Maharaj, wherein he writes that there are you know, some Vaishnavas who doubt that members of ISKCON can actually go back to Godhead in one lifetime. He says, they argue, that the deep conditioning of Westerners, the uh, compromised sadhana of 16 rounds, it used to be 64, you know, for Vaishnavas in previous ages, um, <clears throat> a lack of training in Vaishnav culture, and perhaps a lack of understanding of esoteric teachings, it's all too much of a handicap. But that was not the example of Naluka Vera and Mani Griva. Their fortune, their good fortune, their supreme fortune, was meeting Narada Muni. And Krishna himself acknowledged that. For he says to them in the Bhagavatam, Sadhanam samachitanam sutaram matkritat manam darshanam no bhavet bhanda pumsha no savitur yata. This is Krishna speaking. When one is face-to-face uh, -face with the sun, there is no longer darkness for one's eyes. Similarly, when one is face-to-face -face with a sadhu, a devotee, one who is fully determined and surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one will no longer be subject to material bondage. Wow. So that's our good fortune in taking shelter of Sridhar Prabhupada. One time, because who is Sridhar Prabhupada? <laughs> Well, okay, it's okay for Narada Muni. Well, who is Sridhar Prabhupada? One time, uh, a disciple asked Sridhar Prabhupada, I think a new disciple, Sridhar Prabhupada, who are you in the spiritual world? Now, Sridhar Prabhupada just smiled, and he replied, if I told you, you would faint. If I told you, you would faint. So, we have the same good fortune as did Naluka Vera at Mani Griva. If we take proper advantage of our relationship with Prabhupada and do our part as well, we must with uh, all sincerity relinquish our material desires and with one pointed attention desire to go back home, back to Godhead. We must nourish that, that desire to go back to, to Vrindavan in the spiritual world by hearing and chanting all the wonderful pastimes of the Lord. That will help to awaken our attraction and love for Krishna. And each of us, in our own specific way, 
big or small, must help Prabhupada spread the Sekhatan movement all over the world. And based on our uh, sincere effort, we will be rewarded with Krishna's mercy at the conclusion of, of our efforts, as promised by His Divine Grace. I guarantee, he said. <laughs> I guarantee. Now, a, a question may be raised here based on Krishna's statement. When one is face, he said, uh, when one is face to face with a, a sadhu, a, a devotee, who is fully, fully determined and surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one will no longer be subject to material bondage. So if we're face to face with such an exalted personality, we'll no longer be subjected to material bondage. The question is, after seeing a pure devotee like Sridhar Prabhupada, why aren't all devotees who've seen him immediately liberated? And seeing does, doesn't just mean, you know, being in his physical presence. Seeing, we can see him also through his books. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, read my books. And we see Prabhupada's videos and we're following Prabhupada's instructions. So anyone in ISKCON is awakening or is developing a very real relationship with Sridhar Prabhupada. So the question is, after seeing, quote-unquote, a pure devotee like Prabhupada, why aren't all devotees who see him immediately liberated? Well, Prabhupada has written, quote, Persons who are too much offensive, who commit Vaishnava aparats, or offenses to a sadhu, will have to take some time before being rectified. There's still a possibility, but it's going to take some time if we make offenses. And Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur gives another reason why the effects of sadhu sangha may be delayed. In other words, coming in contact with a pure devotee, or any devotee for that matter, the, the effects may be delayed. He says that, quote, uh, as long as one uh, commits offenses to the holy name, he or she cannot be liberated, even by seeing Narada Muni. There's another perspective there. So the privilege, it's really a privilege, a rare privilege, of directly seeing great souls like Narada Muni or Sridhar Prabhupada will only liberate us from material bondage when we no longer act offensively towards such souls or the Lord's holy name. And if we just avoid the offenses, smooth path back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> A joyful path back home, back to Godhead. So during the period in which we, you know, in our neophyte stage, commit offenses in our devotional lives, our hope for progress lies in our efforts to rectify any misconduct and purify ourselves through constant namasankirtan. That means chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So altogether, we can take shelter in the fact that Sridhar Prabhupada has kindly said he'll take responsibility for our deliverance if we conduct ourselves as his proper followers. Once again, this reminds us of the outstanding theme in this month of Kartik or Dhammadar. What is that? Well, it was revealed uh, uh, by, you remember that devotee I mentioned, um, Srinath Chakravarti, the guru of Kavi, Kavi Karnapur, in his commentary on Sriman Bhagavatam, it was called Chaitanya Mata Majusha. Uh, what was that? Uh, a bouquet of the philosophical positions taken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> this commentary on Bhagavatam. <clears throat> so in his commentary, you remember, he says, Ekam Bhakta Parish Rama Aparam Madhya Kripa. Success in Krishna consciousness is achieved by the effort of the devotee and the Lord's mercy. And I say that's a central theme for this month because that's how Mother Yasoda was finally able to tie her son Krishna to the grinding mortar. And that's how we'll be successful in our efforts to get back home, back to God here. We must make the effort. But we have Krishna's mercy. Krishna's mercy comes before us in the personality of Sridhar Prabhupada and our, and our previous Acharyas. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> now, another question. Perfect questions, perfect answers. <laughs> another question is, how do we know for certain, 100%, that Nalakudvara and Mani Griva went, made it back home, back to Godhead? Well, it's revealed 
by Srila Jiva Goswami in his Gopal Champu. Purva Champu. Purva Champu means it's a section of Gopal Champu. Therein he, relate, he relates a pastime that took place, took place much later on in Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual world. In other words, you know, the Domadar Lila took place in Gokul here in Vrindavan on this planet, but he's referring to a time much later on where Nanda Maharaj is in an assembly with his ministers and various personalities in his palace. And uh, Jiva Goswami writes that Narada Muni, he's inquiring from two personalities. Their names are Shnigda Kantha and Madhu Kantha. They're very be uh, beautiful poets, pure devotees of the Lord, pure uh, devotees with uh, the ability to quote very beautiful poetry for the pleasure of the king, Nanda Maharaj. <laughs> so he's inquiring from these two personalities, Nanda Maharaj. He asks, what happened to Nalakavera and Mani Griva after the Domodar Lila took place in Gokul down on the earth planet? He just brings it up in some conversation to these two personalities. Like, what happened to them? They came out of the trees, the curse was over, but what happened to them? Nandamar says to um, Shnindakanta and Madhukanta, it's beginning in Ch uh, Gopal Champu, uh, verse 3, chapter 9. He says, um, please tell their story. Where, where are they now? So verse 4 uh, is as follows. Uh, bowing his lotus face, Shnigdakanta remained silent and glanced at Madhukanta. Verse 5, Nanda Maharaj said, Why are you reluctant to speak? In verse 6, Shnigdakanta said with respect, What can we say? You will come to know all of this by yourself. So verse 7, with a smile, Nanda Maharaj said, Anyway, you can make us happy by speaking it yourself. So verse 8, Shnindakanta said, listen to this, Actually, myself and Madhukanta are the two to whom Narada gave good results and knowledge by his mercy. Wow. In other words, by Narada Muni's mercy, Nalakuvera and Mani Griva were elevated to Goloka Vrindavan and became Shnigdakanta and Madhukanta. It's right there in, in Gopal Champu. Shnigdakanta said, Actually, myself and Madhukanta are the two to whom Narada gave good results and knowledge by his mercy. He identifies himself as themselves as previously Nalukavira and Managriva. Hare Krishna. So this was all revealed by the, the mercy of Srila Jiva Goswami and his samadhi. Wow. Just like Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he revealed so many other interesting details. Of, Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Whew. Now, then uh, Jiva Goswami, through the mouths of these two poets, Shnigdakanta and Madhukanta, he shares with us what happened after Nanda Maharaj untied Krishna in the Domadar Lila on the earth. Because basically, Srimad Bhagavatam concludes Domadar Lila in verse 10 excuse me, in Canto 10, chapter 11, verse 6 of the Bhagavatam. That's the very last verse, uh, you know, relating the Adomadar Lila. And what is that verse? The verse is as follows. When Nanda Maharaj saw his own son bound with ropes to the wooden mortar and dragging it, he smiled and released Krishna from his bonds. That's all that's said. So after this verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's no more further information of Dhammadar Lila. But fortunately, <laughs> Srila Jiva Goswami continues to enlighten us with more nectar about this pastime in Gopal Champu. It's such an important book. Such an important book, Gopal Champu. And Banu Maharaj has very nicely translated for his devotees. In other words, he takes off from where the Bhagavatam leaves off. So, in Gopal Champu, chapter 8, Verse uh, 54, after untying Krishna, Nanda Maharaj, here we go, Nanda Maharaj asked Krishna, there's, you know, we're, we're back on the earth now, <laughs> Gokul, Krishna's untied. It's like, what happens next? 
So at that point, just after untying Krishna, Nanda Maharaj says to him, My dear son, who is the rascal who has tied you to this mortar? So Krishna kind of stretches up and whispers in his father's ear, a whisper, Oh father, mother did this. <laughs> Krishna said, Mother did this. So hearing that, Nanda Maharaj was silent. And he decided to take Krishna down to the Jamuna, where they both bathed. And after that, Nanda Maharaj requested um, uh, oh, uh, Brahmins to chant protective mantras and perform rituals to remove any lingering uh, negative influences on his son. Then Nanda Baba and Krishna returned to the palace, uh, accompanied as described by Shiva says, by sounds of drums, kartals, and singing. And then Nanda Maharaj sat with Krishna and Balaram and told them stories for an hour. Meanwhile, Shiva Goswami says, it's difficult to hear, Mother Yasoda sat locked in her own room in self-imposed exile. Mother Yasoda sat locked in her own room in self-imposed exile. Ashamed for having bound Krishna and devastated at having put his life in danger. So Jiva Goswami writes that Mother Yasoda would neither leave her room nor talk to any of the other women uh, in the palace. She just stayed by herself and cried and cried and cried and cried. This is Rasa, where you know, we're turning the nectar of the, uh, of, of the ocean of devotion. <laughs> and coming up with all these different emotions according to one's relationship with Krishna. So this is Vatsalya Ras, the parental mood. And these things are going on just to increase, ultimately, one's love for Krishna and Krishna's love for his devotees. It's just part of the, the leela, the pastime. So she cried and she cried and she cried. Now, after having served Nanda Maharaj his dinner, Rohini Devi went to console Yasoda with sweet words and convince her to eat something. But Yasoda, her eyes red from crying, she just refused. And concerned whether Krishna had sufficient milk, and aware that Mother Yasoda was not nursing him, Nanda Maharaj, he went and he brought fresh milk from the barn. He mixed it with sugar, and he gave it to Krishna and Balaram. And as uh, Nanda Maharaj sat and watched uh, Krishna drink, Mother Rohini, with some of the uh, senior women in the palace, they came to Nanda Maharaj and they pleaded, O king, your wife has not eaten all day, neither will she speak to anyone. Nanda Maharaj replied, What can I do? She is undergoing the proper atonement for one needlessly overcome by anger. For such mistakes, one should show remorse. It's just the plot thinking to increase the bob, <laughs> get the end result. Love for Krishna, ad infinitum. So Rohini was shocked. She said, Nanda, your soft-hearted wife will be devastated by such words. So at this point, I was reading, slowly, because it was just so much nectar the first time I heard it, I was just like, relishing it, like you, you, know, you relish a feast. Nanda Maharaj looked at Krishna, who was playing nearby with Balaram, and he said, Krishna, will you go to your mother? And Krishna just shook his head forcefully and said, No, I'll stay with you. <laughs> so disappointed, one of the Yasoda's maidservants, they said, Dear child, then whose milk will you drink when you become hungry? So Krishna responded quite defiantly, I will drink cow's milk mixed with sugar. And they said, And then who will you play with? Krishna answered, With my father, and my brother Balaram, that's all. So Rohini said softly, My son, why are you being so merciless? Your mother is suffering. So this caused some tears to come to Krishna's eyes, but he just looked at his father, trying to, <laughs> you know, didn't want to talk about it anymore. He just started crying, but then he looked at his father. Now at a signal from Rohini, Balaram went to take Krishna's hand in order to go with him to see Mother Yasoda, but Krishna pulled away from his brother, and then he climbed up on his father's lap with tear-filled eyes. 
Now, looking for a way, looking for a way to invoke Krishna's eternal love for his mother, Nanda Maharaj did something unusual, but there was a purpose behind it. He raised his fist and he said, Son, if you agree, then I will go to your mother right now and beat her. I'll beat her for her misdeeds. So hearing this, Krishna, he once <laughs> he grabbed his father's fist. It was just a ploy. He grabbed his father's fist and with tears rolling down his cheeks, he said, he said, please, father, no. So Nanda Maharaj said, son, you are right. I don't need to punish her now for she is dying of sorrow anyway. For she is dying of sorrow anyway. Hearing that his mother was dying, you know, he's a child, Krishna cried out piteously, Where is my mother? I must see her right now. Maya, 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 where are you, mother? So Krishna ran to Rohini, who embraced him and carried him, this is a great movie, carried, it's an eternal movie in the spiritual world, and carried him, a movie, it's a reality, carried him into Mother Yasoda's room, where he ran to his mother, who was lying in bed. And crying in happiness, he jumped into the bed, and he hugged her, and he kissed her. And as she held Krishna in her arms, Mother Yasoda's aching heart just melted. And I was reading, her sobbing could be heard throughout the palace, the sound of which made her husband and everyone in the palace also cry in ecstasy. Jiva Goswami writes that by Krishna's magical touch, Mother Yasoda regained her natural effulgence and, and beauty. She assured her uh, friends that she was all right, happily breastfed her son, and it said, uh, again tasted transcendental bliss. Again tasted transcendental bliss. So I was reading that uh, Krishna and his mother were uh, happily uh, reunited on the evening of Diwali. <laughs> the same day that Krishna was bound. But for the next two days, out of fear, Mother Yasoda uh, wouldn't come out of her room uh, into the presence of her husband. She was too afraid. So on the evening, what was it, the evening of the third day, Nanda Maharaj asked Krishna to find his mother. So following Nanda Maharaj's order, Krishna enticed his mother to come before Nanda Maharaj by pulling on the edge of her sari. What's Salyaras? And with that, the pastime of binding Krishna came to an end. Um, a, a pastime in which Krishna showed extraordinary mercy to Mother Yasoda, uh, that not only demigods, but also the goddess of fortune were amazed by. And this is confirmed in a very famous verse by Srila Shukadev Goswami in the Bhagavatam. Very famous. Quote, Neither Lord Brahma nor Lord Shiva, nor even the goddess of fortune, who is always the better half of the Supreme Lord, can obtain from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the deliverer from this material world, such mercy as received by Mother Yashoda. Hare Krishna. <laughs> I was reading that the, uh, afterwards that the veranda of Maharaj Nanda's palace, where Mother Yashoda first turned, Mantana, Mantana is described, yogurt, dadi, and where Krishna very angrily uh, broke the, the butter churn. It, it's, it's become immortalized as dadi mantana shtala. <laughs> dadi mantana shtala. So I'm going to conclude here. I don't know if we'll have another lecture on this series. Let me, let me just kind of look, maybe backtrack and hear some prayer. I don't know, we'll see. I'll think about it. I've got a week. But I wanted to conclude um, that the next day, um, Mother Yasoda and Mother Rohini sat listening to the pastimes of their sons. And it's just, uh, it's this particular leela, it's a simple leela, but they're very deep, any leela in, in Vrindavan. Um, there's a beautiful verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10, 11, 34, which describes, you know, kind of um, after it's all over, everybody's sitting together and talking, you know, Krishna Kata. This is a perfect verse to end today. Um, it's 10, 11, 34. Tado Yashoda Ronhin Yav Ekam Shakatam Astite Reja Krishna Rama Bhayam 
tatkata sarva natsuke. We'll end with this verse. Thus hearing about the pastimes of Krishna and Balaram with great pleasure, Madhya Yasoda and Rohini, so as not to be separated from Krishna and Balaram for even a moment, got up with them on one bullock cart. In this situation, they all looked very beautiful. I'll recite it one more time for you and for me. <clears throat> Thus hearing about the pastimes of Krishna and Balaram with great pleasure, Madhya Soda and Rohini, so as not to be separated from Krishna and Balaram, for even a moment, got up with them on one bullock cart. In this situation, they all looked very beautiful. Shri Bhajubhumi Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Kartik Month 2022 Ki Domodar Lila Ki Madhya Soda Ki Krishna Balaram Ki <laughs> Nanda Maharaj Madhya Soda all the cowherd men and women of Vrindavan Ki. Such a wonderful pastime. So we'll leave you there. And um, yeah, we'll be back in one week with some more nectar from Sri Vrindavan Dham during this very, very auspicious month of Kartik. I hope that all of you are following us um, with the videos that we're producing. Um, Ananta Vrindavan, again, working hard day and night to, um, to capture all the places that we go and the lectures we give and the kirtans that Badahari and Madhava and Govinda Maharaj are, are leading. We're just having such a wonderful, ecstatic time here. It's all on my uh, YouTube channel, Indra Mishwami. So please keep up with us through the videos as well. Oh, glorious to Sri Prabhupada. Shri Shri Gaurani Thai Ki, Shri Shri Krishna Balaram Ki, Shri Shri Radha Shamasundar Ki, Vrindavaneshwari, Shri Mati Radharani Ki, Mayapur Dham Ki, Shri Shri Gaurani Thai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagi Ki, Nitai Gaur Premanandi, Jai Jai Sisi Radhe, Sham